Okay, so it's Friday. It's almost 8.30, but at 9, I'm going to be starting a 48-hour readathon. Whatever you want-a-thon is all this month, the readathon that is being hosted by Maddie from Book Browsing Blog. And on the weekend of the 10th through 12th, they're doing a 48-hour readathon. So I thought it's a great way to get some reading done. But I'm a little limited this week and I got things I need to do. So I'm actually just going to do 16 in 48 hours. So I've got my little timer and that means like eight hours a day, technically. I want to, every time I click that little start button, it'll start counting down my hours. So while I'm reading and I'm going to see how much I can get read in 16 hours over the next 48 hours. I'm really excited. Okay, so let's talk about what I'm currently reading. I'm doing three readathons. So I'm doing whatever you want a thon, but I'm also doing camp season a thon and not safe for work a thon. So for not safe for work a thon, I picked from a jar stretch marks, and that's a book with a beautiful cover. So for this particular prompt, I'm currently reading The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. And this is a YA fantasy about a girl named Clara who is a ever witch. So basically all the witches in this can control the seasons and depending on what season you're born in determines what type of witch you are. Are you a winter witch? Are you a spring witch? And Clara actually is an ever witch, which is a very, very rare type of witch. And they haven't had one for like the last hundred years, but she can control all the seasons. She's a very important witch because the witches are sort of in control of the atmosphere and the weather and the non-witches, the shaders they call them, basically depend on the witches to take care of everything. Humans have depleted the natural resources, they've done things they should not be doing with the earth and it is causing all kinds of issues with the atmosphere and with uh, weather and stuff like that. And so the witches are trying to control it but it's just getting out of hand, it's completely getting out of hand and the humans are completely in denial about it. They're just like, nah, oh well, too bad. You know, it's not our problem, it's your problem. We know you can fix it. Things are starting to get crazy and Clara needs to, to pull her own. She needs to do her part because she is one of these incredibly powerful witches that only come around once every, you know, once in a while. She re absolutely refuses to because she doesn't trust her magic. It has killed people she cares about in the past. She's accidentally killed them, not intentionally. Whenever she's close to someone, her magic will direct itself towards her because she doesn't have any control over it. She doesn't know how to control it. So she is adamant that she will not be using her magic. That's where I'm at right now. I'm at this point where she's being taught how to control her magic, not by someone who knows because nobody has actually worked with an ever witch because there hasn't been one in a long time. But this group of people have like records and stuff of what it was like to train the last ever witch. So they believe that they can train her. And so she's working with this young scholar. He's he's young. He's about a year older than her. This has bisexual representation because Clara talks about this person and we meet this other person who she had a relationship with, Paige. Things had kind of gone wrong with Clara's magic. Their relationship came to an end. But when we first start this book, she is sleeping with this guy when they just have like a friends with benefits sort of situation going on. So this is actually gonna be great because for whatever you want a thon, any book that has queer representation, you get extra points for. So I've got this one for 2021 release, The and of a uh, and, that's the prompt. So it's got the and of in it. And then favorite genre. I mean, fantasy is definitely one of my favorite genres. And this is a YA fantasy. And since I started booktube, I've read so many YA fantasies. It's definitely a genre or an age range of a genre that I love that I, I read a lot of. So I think that that, I think that counts. And then when I first started reading this, I joined reading sprints. So I'm gonna count this for that non-bookish prompt as well. So I've got a lot of things this is gonna cover. Plus this is the group book for Camp Seasonathon. And of course it works for Not Safe for Workathon. So like, this is a great book to get through. And then the other book I'm reading is, or going to read, I haven't started it yet, is the Tea Dragon Festival because I've been wanting to finish out this series. I also have the Tea Dragon Tapestry. So these are the second and the third book in that series of graphic novels. And I'd like to get those done because I wanna get more of my series done this, this year. And these are nice and short. So I'm gonna work on those. And then I have quite a few other things that I want to get to, as well as I'm gonna continue picking books for my Not Safe for Workathon prompts. So we'll see how far I can get. I'm really hoping that I can get a lot of books read this weekend, at least a lot of my like graphic novel type books. I've got middle grade, I've got a manga, I've got some YA easy type of books. And then as far as my Not Safe for Workathon prompts, this one's YA and it's reading very quickly. I don't really get to choose what comes next, <laughs> which could be scary because I have some really big ones in there. 
but I do also have a lot of really short ones. I'm kind of hoping one of those will come up for this weekend, but we'll see. Just gonna try and make progress. So it is 8.53 and in seven minutes, I'm going to start this little timer and get to reading. I've got quite a few other things I need to do. I'm still working on my mad ship discussion that I'm editing. I just need to make sure I get my time, my reading time in. So it can happen, I can do this. 16 hours is not too much, but it just feels like I got a lot going on. the tea dragon festival and it actually took me a little longer than i expected it to only because i realized that i couldn't remember much from the first book so i went and got the first book from the library ebook and i skimmed it so then i was like oh yeah okay i don't want to give anything away about the first book but in the second book we're following eric and ezekiel and eric and ezekiel are the tea shop owners in the first book and this is when they're younger so we're following them when they're younger and going to Eric's family's village where they have a whole bunch of tea dragons and so actually in this it's surrounding Rin and this dragon named Aiden, Aidhan, something like that. I, I just called him Aiden but it's probably Aidhan or something along those lines. I didn't realize that this doesn't continue the story of the characters that we know from the last book, the two main characters that we met during that book. So it was interesting to see this completely different story but still surrounding tea dragons and so I really enjoyed this and it was a quick read and it works for these prompts under 300 pages last letter first letter middle grade 48 hour readathon and this was actually really cool because not only did it have both gender and sexuality representation for LGBTQ plus representation but it also had a diversity rep there was a deaf character so during a good portion of this the characters in the images were signing and so you only got to see like one of the words they were signing but it was still cool that the author incorporated that into the story because one of the village members was deaf these are so cozy and i went and made myself some tea while i was reading it because i felt like that was appropriate the quality of the art itself is just i don't know it's just so pretty i love the characters i think their expressions are gorgeous and then how whimsical all these different characters are. I think it's just done so beautifully by Kay O'Neill. The stories are pretty simplistic. There's nothing too deep about them, but they're cozy. It's a very cottagecore vibe. Like you really get that cottagecore vibe. It just puts you in this actually very summery mood. I feel like this was a perfect book to be reading for the summer. Okay, so I can do some more of these guys on my TBR Travelers. I've got a little heart for under 300 pages this book was definitely under 300 pages like 130 I think and then last letter first letter because my last book was shadow of night and this was the tea dragon festival one there do I have any uh, nope nope and then middle grade which is right here <gasps> oh ooh, ooh. I'm gonna get another bingo okay I'm gonna get another bingo hee <laughs> so middle grade and then Join a 48 hour readathon, which I'm doing. I'm currently doing that. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm doing really good. This feels good. Feels really good. And then of course this works for other diversity and it works for LGBTQ plus representations. So I've only got a few spots left where I can fill up my board. When I eventually fill this one out completely, Maddie has put up boards that have been reconfigured so you can have a new board once you fill out this one. So there's where we are with that. My next secondary book that I'm going to read is going to be Fruits Basket Volume 4 because this one is past due. So I need to be getting to this one. So I'll be reading The Nature of Witches for a little while and then I will switch over to this one and get through some of this because, you know, these are fairly quick to read because they're manga, but they are a little bit longer. So they take me a little bit of time because 
I don't know, I don't like to go through these too quickly because I want to understand what I'm reading. <laughs> Good morning. It's, um, well, I woke up kind of feeling like I got hit by a truck or something. And I slept plenty, plenty of hours, but. So I read, well, of my readathon, I read just over three hours last night. So by the time I went to bed, it was like, I have 12 hours and 47 minutes left. So I was doing pretty good. I made it another 100 pages in this yesterday. So uh, throughout the day, I had been like at 106 the day before. And then I'm now at 208. So that's where I'm currently at with Nature of Witches. I don't know how to describe how I feel about this book. Like, it's very simplistic in a lot of ways. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's kind of strange to read after I read Shadow of Night, which is the opposite, which is like very detailed. And the story and the plot and the setting are all very, very detailed. This one doesn't have a lot of plot. You know, it's really more about this situation and this one person that we're following the whole time, Clara, and how she's handling things emotionally. There's definitely this own magic system, and we are in this academic setting, but it's very isolated in a lot of ways, and there's just not much else that goes on outside of it. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of depth, although there is a lot of depth to the subject matter in the sense that it's very heavily based on climate change and the issues that we're facing with climate change now and how that is causing all the problems in the story. I don't know, it's really strange. I guess because it's not very plot driven, the story feels kind of like, what does it feel like? It feels like a cloud. It feels like there's something there, but it's not super solid, you know? Like there, there you've got this like, I don't know, it's, I'm weird. <laughs> Books give me weird feelings sometimes. Like books give me, like I, I almost feel it, feel the writing in a, in a way. And this feels very cloud-like, also kind of circular. It is repetitive in the way that she is thinking. If you constantly are in her mind, she's has the same concerns all the time. So you're finding out new things. She's doing something new. She comes back to her concerns. And you're always kind of on this circular journey with her through what she's doing and then what she's remembering and the things that are affecting her from the past. So you're constantly kind of going in this. And it's like a tornado. She, this is written like a tornado. And uh, yeah, it's a tornado. <sighs> Maybe I need to sleep more. <laughs> and I'm not saying all that to say that I'm not enjoying it because I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying the experience and it reads so dang quickly. It's just... I don't know how much I'm enjoying it. I don't know how much I'm enjoying it. The main character is definitely growing on me, but she's just one of those characters who you're, you're just kind of like, I don't know. I get a lot of her anger comes from the fact that she's killed people in the past accidentally. But her power is so important. It's so important. It can save the world. It feels so self-serving a lot of the time. And that seems really unfair of me to say. And I know she's a teenager. I know she's a teenager. I remember she's a teenager. She's a teenager. Yes, yes, yes. It's just, it makes it hard to not be irritated with her at times. Maybe this was a bad book to read after something like reading Shadow of Night. You know, reading another book about witches that is so in-depth and has so much detail and is so incredibly, what an amazingly... Uh, crafted story and this one feels like a cloud <laughs> I guess that makes sense because this is all about weather I don't know we'll see I'm just gonna keep reading it we'll see how it goes a donut always when you're doing a 48 hour rethon you got to get donuts uh, this is for two days this is not just for one day we got maple bars and we got blueberry fritters and their blueberry fritters are so good
Okay, so it's confession time. It's about 7.30 p.m. on Saturday, and I haven't read a single word. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> I'm still at 12 hours and 47 minutes left that I need to read, and my Sunday sum up is about halfway done. Hopefully it won't take too long to finish it this evening, but we just got back from partying for the last three and a half hours, dancing basically, because we went to see my cousin perform. We danced a lot. It was fantastic. And I got my workout for the rest of the year. So I'm done. I don't have to worry about the rest of the year. <laughs> <I'm> joking. <laughs> so I've got to finish my Sunday sum up and that'll be my priority. But then after that, I'm going to be reading. So I will get back into my reading and do as much reading as I possibly can tonight. But it looks like I'll be getting most of my 16 hours and 48 hour uh, tomorrow. Like it'll have to be mostly tomorrow. So yeah, I knew that today was going to be a bit busy because I knew we were going to do this. We were definitely going to go see my cousin perform. And this morning when we were out and about, we got donuts. We did all these different things like running errands and stuff. And it ended up taking a lot longer than we expected it to. It was just kind of nice to have a pleasant Saturday where the weather was nice and we could actually get things done. And I didn't have to do any homework. Like that was good. But yeah, the reading didn't quite happen today. So hopefully tonight. I'll get it done. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing about this, I think it's kind of cute. I don't know if Rachel Griffin did it intentionally, but I know mom absolutely loves Korean dramas and the main male character in this is Korean. Sang is his name. And <laughs> there are these specific things that are done in Korean dramas. At least mom points them out to me. She's like, there are these things they do in Korean dramas that are like in almost all the romantic Korean dramas. And one of them is the male character gives the girl a piggyback ride because she hurts her ankle or does something, hurts herself. And two is if she is ill, he brings her medicine or takes care of her in some way. So, you know, there's like, he bandages her or he gives her medicine. Three is that there is the confession, the absolute confession of being interested in the other person. And it's not necessarily like, I love you. It's it's like, I like you. It's just the confession of interest in the other person. So this has had all those things. So first, in the very beginning, Sang has given her a, a piggyback ride because she hurt her ankle and she got really hurt in this big storm. And so of course he takes care of her, he bandages her up and he's just such a gentleman. And then we've just had, well, I mean, I guess this is kind of spoiler, but we've just had a confession. And so <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, does Rachel Griffin know she's doing that? I kind of want to ask because I will be watching the live show discussion next weekend that Rachel Griffin will be on for camp season -a -thon. So I'm thinking about asking about that. If like that was the intention because she loves Korean dramas, did she actually pull those ideas for this because she had a Korean male character? I don't know but I thought it was kind of cute, actually. Good morning! So it is currently almost 11 a.m. And I have, hey, I finished The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. So I got up this morning. I tried to read it a little bit last night before going to bed, but I was so tired. I was so exhausted that I didn't get a chance to read it for very long. When I woke up this morning, I still had about 12 hours left for my readathon, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get <laughs> my 12 hours done completely by 9 p.m. tonight. I've got sprints at one o'clock, and sprints are hard for me because we end up doing some chatting. We're not reading that whole time. So we'll see, and I'm gonna do the best that I can. I may go a little longer than 9 p.m., but right now I have nine hours and 35 minutes left. I was kind of feeling like, oh man, I'm not gonna be able to get my, my time done, and I was feeling a little bad, and then I was like, no, don't feel bad. I had a really amazing time yesterday. I had so much fun. I haven't gone dancing in a long time. It was a blast, and I danced for almost three hours, <laughs> so I danced a lot. I'm not feeling as sore as I thought I would, but I'm definitely bloated. My skin's like, whoa, Amy, what are you doing? Drinking beer and dancing, <laughs> it was a lot. But I had a, a blast, so I can't feel bad about that. I just can't feel bad about that. And now today I'm ready to read. And I'm gonna think about my rating on this one. I did like the way it ended. It came around to the point where I needed it to, 
to be able to enjoy this book well enough. It's probably gonna be around a three to a 3.5 stars. I don't wanna put pressure on myself to give it an actual rating right now, but I will do that for my next Sunday Sum Up. This didn't do for me what it has done for everybody else, which is a bummer, it's just a bummer. And you know, the reality is, is that not every book is gonna hit every person the same way. And I have to accept that, especially the ones that are highly anticipated, really excited. You get these ideas that you're gonna love it just the way everybody else has. And sometimes it doesn't happen because writing style feels differently for everyone. And what we appreciate from books can be much different for each person. So like, I'm accepting that. I'm accepting that this just may not have been for me the way it was for everyone else. And that means I'm gonna get to pick my next Not Safe for Workathon. But before I do that, let's talk about how this works for my readathons and everything. Let's let's wrap this up. So this is the group book for Camp Seasonathon. So next week, next Saturday, I will watch the live show discussion and I might post a little question about the whole Korean drama thing because I'd be curious to see what Rachel Griffin has to say about that. And then for Not Safe for Workathon, this was Stretch Marks, a book with a beautiful cover. So it works for that. And then finally, we've got our whatever a thon. So I'm counting this for a 2021 release which is down here. That doesn't give me a bingo yet. It's also the end of uh, an and. Ooh, that's close, but no. Still no bingo. I'm getting close, I'm getting close. Put that one there. And then the other one I was counting this was for favorite genre. It counts for that one and that still doesn't give me a bingo, but that's okay. Little heart favorite genre. And then I'll also get points when I'm counting this for whatever a thon, I'll get points for diversity rep other and also LGBTQ plus rep because this book does have the main character who is bisexual. So I feel like that works really well. And here's where my board currently stands. I'm doing well. Okay, so. Ugh. I've got my little pot and I'm ready to pick my next Not Safe Workathon book prompt and see what I get. But what kind should I pick? What kind should I pick? I'll pick this one. Oh, it's this one right here. Everything's stuck together. Baby Brain. Mood Read. A mood read! Okay, so I've got baby brain. I can read whatever the heck I want to. It's up to you, Amy. Ah, oh, that's exciting! What do I want to read? Oh my god, yes, many good books. <laughs> what do I feel like reading? Oh, what is your Mother, it's my mood read. I don't need your help. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Okay, so I have gone strategic. I've gone strategic because I've got a 48 hour readathon going on and I want to get through books quickly. So I'm gonna choose the Tea Dragon Tapestry. This is the third and final book in the Tea Dragon graphic novel series, at least the third and final at the moment. I don't know if K. O'Neill is gonna be doing more, but at the moment, this is all they have written. So I am gonna go with this because it's another graphic novel and it's gonna be quick. waiting to go on to some reading sprints right now. I'm gonna be doing my monthly reading sprints with Jenny King. So I'm excited because it's the first time we'll have ever done any kind of sprints or live show together. I've been working through Fruits Basket, so I'm about this many pages in. That's probably what I'll read during our sprints. We have this place that makes amazing meat pies up here in Bellingham, and it's called Holly's Meat Pies, and she's actually a friend of our family. And I'm having a lentil curry meat pie right now, which is really good. So that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. I've got eight hours and 40 minutes left. So hopefully I can make some dents in my time during these reading sprints. We'll just see how much time we actually spend reading versus chatting. I am on a sprint right now and it's a nice 45 minute long sprint. It's kind of funny because Jenny has this incredible spinner wheel that we're using to pick 
the length of our sprints. And the first one was 60 minutes long, and then the second sprint was 55 minutes long. This spinner wheel must know that I need to get some reading done because it's choosing these long, long sprints, which is fantastic because you know me, during sprints, I usually don't read hardly anything. So I'm actually getting some reading done and I'm on page 272 of Fruits Basket. So I'm getting close. I'm kind of hoping that with this sprint, I'll finish it but I'm really enjoying it. There have definitely been some parts of this that feel like five-star parts, five-star moments. And then we've got some sections where we're talking to other characters that are just not as interesting to me. And so I'm like, mm, you know, not as exciting about those particular characters or those particular scenes. And you get to learn some of the, the backstory of like Uatani and well, even Toru and her mother. And that was helpful because when we were watching the anime version, the series, some episodes came up that were in this collection that were ahead of the stuff that we'd already read in the third book. And I was like, wait a minute, we never learned this in the, in the third book. So if you're watching the anime series, I would say read through the fourth collection of the collector's editions of Fruits Basket volume four before you watch the series all the way through because the stuff that's happening in this book happens way sooner in the anime. So now after this book, I think we can probably get back to watching the anime and getting caught up again. But we've met some new Zodiac characters and that's a lot of fun, getting to meet some of these new characters and learning more about them. And uh, I think feelings are gonna get shared soon. I think some characters are starting to get to the bursting point when it comes to feelings and they're gonna have to talk about them a little bit. So I'm looking forward to that. And I still am at the point where I don't know who I want to win. I know that Shella told me like in this love triangle, there was a specific person that she was really rooting for. And I don't have that person. I like all the characters. So I just don't know. Sorry, there's a lot of mosquitoes out here right where I'm at. So I got to move back towards the house. And I don't really have that. So I'm going to be kind of bummed when she has to make her choice. Or will she have to make a choice? Or is this going to be a relationship between the three of them. I don't know. I just know that if she has to choose between the two characters, then I will be bummed because I like them both. Okay, so I just finished reading sprints and we went for almost six hours. <laughs> that was a lot. It was great though. And it was really nice to have Jenny King on my channel. We had a lot of great interaction with different people who were there. And I got my book done during that time. So I finished Fruits Basket. You know, I kind of thought that I would get done with this quicker, but these mangas take me a little longer because well, for one, this is 390 pages. So it is big, even though it's a manga. And then, I don't know, I don't like to rush through it too much because there's so many different characters, so many different intertwining storylines. If I rush through these, then I don't understand what the heck's going on or I miss points or details. I don't know who's doing what and you know who's included in what conversation. And I still don't want to feel like I'm just rushing through books and not actually enjoying them. I don't ever want that to be the goal. So if it's going to take me a little longer to read a manga because I need to make sure I'm understanding and enjoying what I'm reading, then I'll do that. And I really enjoyed this. I did enjoy this. I don't know yet what I want to rate it. I'm, I'm kind of holding off on the ratings at the moment because I just want to be able to have time to think about it, let it sink in. It did kind of feel a little bit like an in-between book. We did learn more about certain characters, so there was a lot added to it, and we got to meet at least one new Zodiac member, if not two, I think just one. And so that was wonderful, but it does feel like this is building up to the next book. So I will put that on hold and hopefully I'll get to it sooner rather than later because this one's been sitting on my TBR for a while. And so this one works for Aurelium. So I finished my animal studies course. It was wonderful. It was quick. Wasn't that the point? And I feel like I'm confident if I have to raise familiars as a necromancer, I will be able to handle them because I've taken animal studies. I did use this for Camp Seasonathon because I'm trying to use whatever I can for Camp Seasonathon, get those page numbers in for K Camp Kehlani, a book I never thought I would read because honestly, I never thought I would read manga before starting a booktube channel. So I thought that that was appropriate. And then as far as TBR Travelers, for whatever you want a thon, it works for less read genre because manga is not a genre I read very often. I mean, I guess manga is not a genre, it's a format, but there are things that are pretty common with mangas, I think. And this is like a fantasy manga. I kind of think manga stands on its own a little bit. It has its own themes that are unique to mangas and styles that are unique to mangas. So I'm considering it a less read genre, even though it's not really a genre, but I'm gonna consider it anyways. And that gives me a bingo. Woohoo! 
Woo! So I got my third bingo. I'm doing really well. This is a, this is a good weekend. It also works for TBR veteran. Now I know that this particular book hasn't been on my Goodreads TBR for a long time, but this is past due with the library <laughs> because I've renewed it three times and it's been sitting on this TBR card for a while now. So I think I'm gonna count it as a TBR veteran because it's been waiting for me to read it for way longer than it should have had to wait for me to read it. So I'm counting that. And that one doesn't yet give me a bingo, but you know, one was enough. And the last one is different format. So I counted it for the points for a different format, but I'm not putting an extra heart because I've already used that up. So that's where my board is currently standing. It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty darn good. And so since this was one of my secondary books, not one of my not safe for workathon books, the next secondary book that I would like to read is Wilder Lord. This is one that I had started during my 48 hour readathon for the game of bookish life, the one that I did for my reaching a thousand subscribers. The first book is called The Accidental Apprentice by Amanda Foody, and I absolutely love that book. And so I picked up the second one. Actually, no, Magda got it for me. This was a gift, I forgot. This was a gift from Magda. She got me The Accidental Apprentice and she got me The Weeping Tide, which came out this year. So I wanna get to this. I am excited about it. I did start it and I think that because I was reading this for my 48 hour readathon, I was exhausted and I was not enjoying the experience of reading this as much as I wanted to. So I will probably restart the book. And so that'll be my next secondary book. The secondary book, the book that I'm working alongside of my Not Safe for Workathon book. I also need to start Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Maybe I won't start that today. We'll see. That's one that I need to read because I've got a certain number of chapters and pages I need to read each week because I'm buddy reading that with Danielle from Book Car. So yeah, I'm currently at six hours remaining. It is 7 p.m. I don't know that I'm gonna get it all done tonight. I'm still gonna carry out the rest of my time. So I know that it may not have worked within the 48 hours that I had originally planned, but I have committed to 16 hours and I'm gonna finish my 16 hours. It may be that I carry it over in tomorrow. It may be that I don't go to bed tonight. <laughs> we'll see. So it is 10.30 and I am at four hours and 51 minutes remaining. I have just finished The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Kay O'Neill. And this is the third, and at least at this point, I think the final book in this series. And so I'm excited to have got caught up with slash finished a series. This hasn't happened in a while. I picked this as my mood read and this was perfect for a mood read because it just was pleasant. And I have been feeling this weekend like it's just going so quickly and I have so many things that I want to get accomplished. And of course, I just finished school. So I feel like, Amy, you need to give yourself a rest. But at the same time, I'm like, but I want to do all the things that I haven't been able to do because I've been in school. And so it was nice to pick up a book that was easy to read in a weekend when I didn't actually have as much time to read as I thought I was going to. It felt good to get some of these books finished. So I really did enjoy this because we came back with Greta and Minette and these are two of the characters that we met in the first book and I really enjoy these characters. And we also got to see two of the characters that we met brand new in the second book. So like we combined the two groups of characters that we've met and it was really fun. And I got the focus that I wanted again in this particular one on the tea dragons. I felt like the second book they kind of steered away a little bit from the story focus on the tea dragons but we got to come back to that here and I just really enjoyed that element of it that makes I don't want to say like it makes a big difference but it's more like I do enjoy that aspect of it so it was really nice to have that back in this one so as far as what this is going to work for I realized that this actually works for camp seasonathon because this is a book that was published in 2021, which is one of the prompts for that. And then for whatever thon, it's gonna count for G, P, and S on the cover. And this was one of the group specific prompts because you've got Gavin, Pris, and Sandra. So we've got the P, the G, and the S. So that works out perfectly, fits that prompt. And I can put a little heart there. Still doesn't give me a bingo at all, but we're getting a little closer to my blackout. I'm counting it for less rare genre because 
I know I said like graphic novels and mangas are more of a format thing, but I think that those can work for a lesser genre for a prompt like this. So I'm still gonna go with that. And then continue a series, because this was the end of the series. So I counted for that. So I didn't get too many new hearts, but you know, I'm working close to getting my blackout. And of course this book will work for queer representation and it'll also work for diversity representation. So I feel like this was a great choice for this particular readathon. And I really enjoy this whole series. As I said before, this is a vibe. So if you're looking for a series that just feels so warm and sweet and makes you wanna drink all the tea, then I highly recommend the Tea Dragon Society series because it's just really good. Okay, so since this one worked for Baby Brain, which was a mood read, and I picked this one because for one, I don't have Baby Brain at the moment, but I mean, for this readathon I do, but I do have like post school brain, <laughs> a brain that doesn't want to think too much. So this was a perfect option for that. I didn't have to think too much. I just got to enjoy the sweet, pleasant vibes and all the gorgeous pictures. So now it's time to pick my next not safe for workathon prompt and we'll see if it is a book. I've been pulling a lot of the non-bookish ones. So here is my wonderful little jar and I'm going to pick the next one. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay, go for this one down near the bottom. That one. Baby bottle. Oh. <laughs> no! Oh, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Oh dear, okay. All right, surprise, it's twins. Read a duology. Okay, so this is good. This is actually good. It's not exactly helping me with books I need to read for this particular month, but it is helping me with my Aurelium Magical Readathon, my Spring Equinox, my school, my schooling. So I am just getting back into the thick of schooling, I guess. And so that is Canary Row and Sweet Thursday by John Steinbeck. So What's <laughs> the mom laughing at me? In this is a bind up and I have Canary Row in here. It's not a long book, so it's not going to be difficult. And plus it's one that I have read multiple times, like two or three times. And I love it. It's one of my favorite classic stories is Canary Row. So I'm excited to get back to that one because then I'm going to be reading the sequel to Canary Row, which is Sweet Thursday by John Steinbeck. This is for a secret TBR. So I've been wanting to get to this book and it just hasn't happened. <laughs> so I'm excited that I'll be getting to it. And both of these actually work for my Spring Equinox because Canary Row works for Restoration, which is a book that's featuring healers. So I'm gonna be learning how to heal, which is great for necromancy because I wanna be able to help out as much as possible. People tend to think poorly of necromancers. So I'll be reading Canary Row because of Doc Ricketts. And this works for the class Shapeshifting. I had to pick a book that had a creature with claws on the cover. So we've got little cats on here. There's one here and there's one there. And cats have claws. I thought this was perfect for that prompt. And so this is my, what I'll be using to study shape-shifting. <laughs> so I'm really excited about reading both of these books, to be honest. And they're nice and short little books, so they won't take too long, hopefully. And I will finally get some of those magical rilliums ticked off. Plus, you know, it's twins. Surprise! <laughs> Good morning. It is Monday. And yeah, I'm not done with my 48 hour readathon yet. <laughs> I've got just under four hours left. So I did read a little bit last night, but I was really tired, so I didn't read too long. I started The Weeping Tide again from the beginning, and I'm about 50 pages in. So I'm working on that one, not quite where I was when I left it off last time, but I'll keep working on it. And it's a middle grade, so it's a fast read. I'm going today to get my hair done. I get my hair done like twice a year. So <laughs> it's usually like when school's out. So this is what it looks like now and you'll see what it looks like afterwards. It's about a 45 minute drive to get to my hairdresser. So on the way I will listen to Little Dort and I will count that as part of my 16 hours. <laughs> So whether or not summer has arrived here in Washington, it has arrived on my head. So <laughs> I've got my color done and I'm looking very nice. I like it. Okay, so it is Monday night and it is just after 10 p.m. And I am, I have no clue why I'm so tired. <laughs> but I have reached page 130. Let's see, what is this? Where am I done? Am I done? 136 of The Weeping Tide. So I'm making some pretty good progress and I'm past the point that I was at with my last, the 48 hour Grave of Bookish Life readathon. At this point, 
I am enjoying it. I don't know yet if I'm enjoying it as much as the first book. I don't think I am. The first book was just so good. It was a five star. I absolutely loved it. And this is good. It's just a little slower moving than the first one, I think. But there's a lot of interesting things happening. And I'm really enjoying the setting of the sea because this one is set in the wilder land. It's the sea. And so we're getting a lot of like maritime creatures and beasts. And they're trying to figure out what's going on because one of the legendary beasts is causing a lot more problems than they normally do. So that's basically where I'm at and I'm just tired. So like, maybe I'm just too tired to be reading this, but I wanted to get my 16 hours done for my whatever-a-thon 48 hour readathon. So it, it took a little longer than 48 hours, but you know what? I got it done and today was a good day. I got my hair done. Yeah, that's it. And I will talk about this book a lot more in my next Sunday Sum Up when I give it a review. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see what happens for the rest of my month, doing whatever you want a thon. Whatever you want a thon, not safe for work a thon, and camp season a thon. I'm just, I'm going strong with these, these three readathons. I'm doing really well, I think. So I've got a lot of work to do and a lot of books to read. And I'm just going to keep doing whatever I can do. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.